Oh, we've been doing a temperament study and we're trying to figure out what color we might be. Yellow are, are the, the tiggers in life. They bring all the joy. How many yellows do we have in the room today? Woohoo! They're the ones that are happy, man. We are so glad you are here today. Yellows, as we learn, speak the language of people and fun. They are magnetic, they are inspiring, they are encouraging. And the most wonderful thing about yellows is you're not the only one. Yeah, go ahead, yellows, give yourselves a hand, right? Because God loves the color that he has painted you. Welcome to Faith Church. If you're at the 945 service here at Anderson, we welcome you. If you're joining us in, in Pendleton at that campus, we meet at 1145. Or if you're joining us online, we are so thankful that you've decided to become a part of the Faith Church family. And we love our yellows. In fact, God created you with a specific temperament. Whenever you were fashioned in your mother's womb he uniquely wired you hardwired you with a temperament and he could have spray painted you one of four different colors and today we're going to focus on yellow yellow are again those people that speak the language of people and fun and when god created you he did not make a mistake and our kind of our custom to this series is to turn to someone near you so i'm going to ask you if you would practice by turning to someone near you and saying you look marvelous in the color god has painted you God did not make a mistake when he painted you yellow. If you're yellow, I want you to know that God thinks you are awesome. See, that's the language of yellow. Today we're going to do a character study of one of the most famous yellows in all of Scripture. And when I first started looking at his life, I think I miscalculated his color. At first, I thought he was red, but the more I read about his life, I realized that King David was most likely a yellow. He spoke the language of people. He spoke the language of fun. And we're going to pick up a story in 2 Samuel chapter 6. We're going to be reading from verse 14. And this is a scene where David is bringing the ark of God into the city of David. And the ark of God is like, uh, it's, it's more than you saw in Indiana Jones in the temple or whatever it was. Which, which one had the ark in it? Indiana Jones. That's good enough. It was Indiana Jones. <laughs> And it's much more than that. The ark was the, the golden box in which God's spirit rested. And the good news is that in the New Testament, you are the ark of God. You are the thing, you are the thing that God decided for his spirit to rest upon. You are the temple of God's Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, it was all about the ark. That's where the spirit of God was. The ark of God was being brought into the temple or the city of David and there was going to be a tent that's been prepared for the ark and it would allow people to worship God 24 hours a day. It's like David got a glimpse into the future because before this time there was a, a four inch thick tapestry that separated people from, from the ark, from the presence of God. And only one time a year could someone enter into the presence of God. And David saw something, and he wanted to make sure that, that God was worshipped. And you realize there was access that was available to the Holy Spirit, and it was a, an incredible experience. In round one, when David tried to bring in the ark, there was a disaster that takes place, and someone dies, and now David's really frustrated, and they figure it out. And they said, we're going to bring God's Holy Spirit into the city of David. And when that happens, a party breaks out. There is singing and praising and shouting and, and the, the blasting of trumpets. And all of a sudden, David starts a dance routine. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. We're going to read it in, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. David's now thrown off his kingly robes. And it's as if David is making a statement. There's only one king here that matters. And here's what the Word of God tells us. Wearing a linen ephah, which is kind of the, the, the garment of a priest, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. See, all the yellows went, amen. <laughs> dancing before the Lord with all his might. This wasn't just toe tapping. All right, I, this is my idea dancing right here. Everyone practice with me. Just tap your toes right there. If I start doing this, revival has just broken out right here, man. 
All right. I had someone says, well, don't you square dance? I said, every time I dance, it's square. I can tell you that much, right? <laughs> So there's some toe tapping, well, more than toe tapping going on. It was more than, than, you know, like some of us with our personality types, our temperaments. There's signs that, you know, when, when someone's leading worship, and they say, why don't you just raise your hands and you do this right here, right? David wasn't just raising his hands like that. David, all his yellow was coming out. This man is dancing with all his mind, it, might. It was like a, a scene from Old Testament Footloose. Oh, yeah, come on, yellows, help me out. <laughs> ah, I would have danced longer had the yellows joined me. Come on. He danced with all his might. You see, a reality check for those of you that like the movie Footloose and you're in love with, with Kevin Bacon... When people, is that his name, right? Mr. Bacon, right? <laughs> if you are in love with Footloose, here's a, here's a word of caution. You may not be aware. Most men, when they get angry, do not get in a Volkswagen. Drive underneath a bridge and break out in dancing. All right, I am a red temperament. Never once in my life have I ever said, I'm so angry, I'm going to dance. <laughs> Never once. But David just breaks out in dance. It's an incredible celebration. And there's some good news for all the yellows in the room today. Good news, number one, David was handpicked as a yellow, handpicked by God to be king, the favorite king of Israel. That ought to be where yellows go, uh-huh. It's about time someone noticed, right? Right, yellows. Just so you know, David was a man after God's own heart. Oh, see, the yellows, you're, you're getting with it now. Come on, yellows, right? <laughs> all right, good news for yellows is David danced with all his might. Yellows like to have fun. They're the life of the party. <laughs> right? It's so true. And God's plan for those with yellow temperament, I believe, is this, that you reflect God's joy. Yeah. See, God is a happy God. He has joy. He is the very definition of joy, and you reflect God's joy. Without yellows in the church, the church would be filled not with Tiggers, we'd be filled with Eeyores. <laughs> right? This would be our theme song. I'm so happy, here's the reason why. Jesus took the fun things all away. Yellows just love to have a good time. And I believe that yellows are, have been uniquely wired by God to be the best evangelists on the planet. And the reason being is because people want to have fun. And when people outside the church think about people inside the church, they think about Eeyore. But everything changes whenever they're at the bar and there's someone walking outside the street that's happier than everyone that's in the bar. You see, the reason they're happier is because they have Jesus Christ in their heart. And how many people agree with me that the buzz that God gives is better than any buzz you can get from any drug or alcohol? This is the celebration that God has put within the heart of all of our yellows. But a word of maybe warning, caution, it might be a whole new concept for yellows. In case you didn't know it, and this could be a shocker, I don't want to have like a spoiler alert, but a little bit of a shocker here. Not everyone appreciates your excitement. <laughs> and the yellows are like going, why? Why are they laughing? All right, because your excitement sometimes is so exciting and you're so excited about what we're doing next that people think it may not be sincere. But for those of you that aren't yellow, why don't we just take it at face value? God's wired them to be excited about things that you're not necessarily excited about. Why can't we just let yellows have some fun? <laughs> All the yellows are going, yeah, amen. Everyone else is going, I don't know. I don't like this pastor. He's never been that good anyhow. <laughs> All, right. All right. But, but just, just so you know, we represent God's joy. And, 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 and for those people that every once in a while think yellows might be over the edge, you might be with good company or bad company. David had a wife that didn't like the fact that he had so much 
joy. Matter of fact, most preachers call her Michael, but it's McCall. And it winds up that, that she is, she is the, the kind of, well, every party has a pooper, you know what I mean? And so she's the party pooper. In fact, we're going to read that, that David is like going to church, and he's having a blast. He's dancing, having a good time. She didn't make it to church that day. She stays inside, looks out the window, and kind of observes what's going on. Maybe things would have changed if she participated, but she didn't participate. She spectated, and as she's spectating, she starts to have uh, animosity toward her husband, and we'll read about it in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16. This is McCall, and this is, this is her, uh, her party-pooping moment, right? Verse 16, as the ark of the Lord, the, the God box, was entering the city of David, McCall, daughter of Saul, watched from the window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And she's so ticked off. David is in such big trouble that when he comes home, she doesn't wait for him to make it into the family room. She meets him in the driveway. All right, guys, if the gal in your life ever meets you in the driveway, you are in big trouble, right? And so she meets him in the driveway. Verse 20, when David returned home to bless his household, Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, Oh, how the king of Israel has, has distinguished himself today going around half naked in full view of all the slave girls and of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Right? <laughs> she's, she's letting me have it. David makes a classic yellow mistake because sometimes, and yellows, you know this is true, sometimes you speak before you think. Right? And this is what David does. He just speaks. He isn't thinking, he just lets it rip, all right? Because she's got her little attitude going on, and so he now gets a little attitude going on, and so he fires one right back. David said to McCall, it was before the Lord. So he brings God into it. You can't argue with anything when you bring God into it, right? It was before the Lord who chose me. I danced before God who chose me. All right, now he's not thinking. Look at this. Me rather than your daddy or any of your stupid brothers. <laughs> right? You can, can you feel it coming on now, right? Hey, you may not like my dancing. You may not like Footloose, but I'm telling you, God likes me a little more than your daddy and your stupid brothers, right? And so, so he, he lets it, he lets it just roll here. And when he pointed me, ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. All right, and basically he's saying, sorry for your luck. And then he goes on to say this. He says, if you don't like yellow, ba 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 baby, you ain't seen yellow yet, right? Because he goes on, and he says, and I will become even more undignified than this. <laughs> All the yellows are excited now. Preach it, brother. But just so you know, there's some other temperaments that are like, oh, that's creepy, right? <laughs> but we love you, yellows. Man, he just said, you haven't seen yellow. If you think you're going to control me, you're not going to control me. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to let it rip because when God touches a yellow's heart, their worship involves a little bit of body movement. It's just a natural response. They remember what God has done for them. So we're going to take a quick look at some of the, the reasons why God loves yellows so much. And one of the positive qualities is this, that yellows find joy in all circumstances. They just find joy in all circumstances. I believe James, the brother of Jesus Christ, was a yellow. Even though he's guided by God's Holy Spirit, I think only a yellow could possibly write these words in James 1, verse 2. Consider it pure joy. Anybody here like pure joy? All right, yellows, right? We want pure joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. <laughs> of many kinds. Only a yellow could turn a trial into something fun. All right, if you have a mundane job, you need to work with the yellow because they take the mundane and make it fun. You're going to... Take the grape, grape, put it on the tray. Take the grape, put it on the tray. Take the grape, put it on the tray. And a yellow will throw a grape at you. <laughs> All right, they're just going to have fun. They're going to make things 
son. And so, so they're excited about worship. And I mentioned that before because they, they remember what Jesus has done for them. And when they remember, it sparks something inside of them that makes their body want to move. See, yellow, see the positive in, in, in circumstances. I, I heard a story recently about a kid that must have been a yellow. And he was driving his grandfather crazy because this yellow energy that he had and all the joy that he had. And finally, he, he kept saying, you know, you've got to settle down. You've got to be still. There, there's, you can't continue to, to behave this way. And the yellow was just being yellow. It's what kids do. It's what yellows do. And finally, Grandpa said, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. We're going to go to the neighboring farm. And so they went to the neighboring farm, and he asked if he could have permission to have his, his grandson shovel out the barn stall because that'll settle him down. He said, you need some good hard work. You need to know that everything in life isn't about fun. And sure enough, he opens up the, the stall door, and it was a stall that had not been shoveled for a long time, and the poo in there was about knee deep. And he says, you're going to have to shovel out the stall. And this kid, because it's yellow, yellow, grabs his shovel and starts shoveling like crazy. He goes, woo-hoo, woo-hoo, woo-hoo. He's throwing poo everywhere. Finally, Grandpa says, why are you so excited? This is a bunch of poo. And he said, I'm excited because underneath this poo, there has to be a, a pony somewhere. <laughs> you see, they see the positive in every circumstance. Yellows make great leaders because they're excellent motivators. God chose David, a yellow, to be king over Israel. Here's another reason God loves yellows. They inspire others. They have tireless optimism. A helpful hint, for those of you who just don't enjoy life very much, you need to hang around with yellows. Because yellows will not let you mope. They just will not let you mope. As a matter of fact, if you happen to be miserable, God most likely will send a yellow into your life. Have, have you ever had one of those days when nothing goes right? Anybody ever had one of those days? Anybody had a week where nothing went right? Anybody had like a year or two where nothing went right, right? All right, when you have one of those days when nothing goes right, God almost always sends a yellow. I used to think it was to make your life miserable. But I think it's to get you out of, like, Eeyore mode. Right? When I was in college, I had a roommate. His name was Dave. And Dave was, uh, is not only a roommate, he was my, one of my dearest friends. But every once in a while, Dave would go through a, a day that wasn't good for Dave. And when Dave went through one of those days, you knew it wasn't good. And so I just gave Dave a space. So he had hit one of those, I don't remember what it was, he hit one of those tough days, and he needed his space. And finally, I said, Dave, you know, maybe you want to go out and do something? Because I got a little bit of yellow inside of me, and I'm thinking, maybe, <laughs> maybe we could get out of the doldrums here. And, and so I, I leaned over and said, you want to, and he says, oh, I need to go to Walmart. I said, let's do that. And so we go to Walmart. And we're going through Walmart, and I'm not even talking to him because he does not want to speak English at this point. He just wants to grunt. Burr, yeah, burr. You know, and he grabs something, throws it in the cart, burr, throws something in the cart. What happens is, oh, God sends a yellow. And there's, a, <laughs> there's this guy in college, and he was like, he had no other color other than yellow in him. And so we get to the end of the aisle, and this guy waited until we get to the end of the aisle, and he jumps in front of Dave. And when he does, he jumps in front and stops the cart and goes, Hi, Dave, how you doing? <laughs> Dave didn't say a word. I'm standing behind Dave going... <laughs> right, and the, and the guy backs off just about the time Dave's ready to run him over with the cart. And so I'm thinking, well, whew, we got by. Dave didn't kill a yellow, that's good. We get to the end of the aisle, and the guy waited again until we get to the end of the aisle. And he's just not going to give up. He jumps out and says, Hi, Dave, how you doing? And I'm good, and like, Are you crazy? He's going to beat you up. All the signals I can give the guy, he's not, Shut up. And so Dave pushes, doesn't say a word, just pushes past him. I'm thinking, Whew, finally, this guy's learned his lesson until we get to the end of the aisle. He does it again. He jumps in front of Dave right thinking, can't you can't pick on any hints from this guy at all? I mean, can't you pick up on this? No, no, no. He jumps out and says, hi, Dave, how you doing? And Dave finally realizes this guy is not going to go away. So Dave leans forward and gets as close to his face as you can without actually biting someone's face and says, I'm doing okay under the circumstances. 
And this guy had the greatest response. He leans up a little closer to Dave and goes, what are you doing under there? <laughs> Good question. If you're doing okay under the circumstances, what are you doing under there? If you're under the weather, what are you doing under there? If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by depression, what are you doing under there? Hang around with the yellow. They'll make sure you don't stay in Eeyore mode. And the most wonderful thing about yellows is you're not the only one. Right? We, are, we as yellows, are encouragers. And God is always sending encouragers into your world. They're optimists. They see the positive of everything. You can see with David. David is not even a, a warrior whenever he fights Goliath. If you're not familiar with this story, there's a Philistine giant. He really is a giant. He's huge. He's a warrior. I mean, he, he just, he's just like the man of all men. And he's taunting the Israelite army and making fun of their God. And he says, Give me one man that I might slay him. And they're saying, like, just man to man, hand to hand combat. And every morning he makes this declaration, he blasphemes our God, and it winds up the Israelite soldiers just run like crazy. Ah! Go to their tent and hide out all day long playing video games or whatever you do in the tent. And it winds up that David is delivering some cheese and some bread, like a pizza delivery guy, and he winds up hearing the giant, Give me one man that I might slay him. He's like a, like a 12 or 13-year-old kid. He's not trained for war. And he says... I'll take them. Only a yellow would do that. Right. right? All the blues are like going, oh, that would not be wise. Right? That wouldn't be all right. Saul, the king at the time, said, that would not be wise. Right? He's a giant. He's a warrior. You're like Pee Wee Herman. Right? There's just, there's nothing there. Right? You, you, got, you got, what's your weapon? I, I got a slingshot. <laughs> That's not going to work. And David, like the optimist, starts encouraging other people. I've killed a lion with a slingshot. And everyone goes, yeah, man, lion, giant, yeah, nice try. What do you mean nice try? I killed a bear with a slingshot. And then I, I cut his throat. And then by the time he gets done, the king's going, well, I, maybe you could. Because yellows are, are optimistic. They see the positive. They know they can do anything through Christ who gives them strrength. And so they're all excited, and he's excited about it. And finally, the king says, well, you can wear my armor. And he tries to put it on. It doesn't even fit him. He can't use it. And still, he talks the king into letting him fight Goliath. That is an optimist. And the good news is, yellow wins. Right, he conquers the giant, and God gives him victory. All because he had that like, in wire, hardwired optimism that says, with God, I can win this battle. For all the wise, though, for all the yellows, there is good news, and here's the tough part, there is some bad news. All right? And here's a, here's a couple of warnings. Number one, you may not color in the lines. Matter of fact, yellows may not even know what the lines are. Right, yellows are the ones, that, and if you've ever taught like a, a you know, a early childhood here at church or, or at school, you know that if, when, when yellows, they just don't even bother trying. They're just, they're the ones that just get out colors, put about five in their hand and just scribble. Right, and, and, and there's some good things and bad things about that. The good thing is that you challenge status quo. The bad thing is you challenge status quo. Sometimes they'll get you in trouble. Here's another thing. They struggle sometimes with long-term commitments, right, because they lose fun. Right? It's not fun anymore. I, I had a job for a while, but eh, I just quit. It wasn't fun. I had a marriage for a while. I quit. It wasn't fun. They're the, yellows are the ones that set the appointment with me and tell me that they left their spouse. And when they tell me, they say, well, I left them because God wants me to have fun. To which I say, where is that in the Bible? And they say, well, you're the pastor. You figure it out. All right, and you can look pretty hard for God wants you to have fun. And the reality is this, that God is more interested in your holiness than your happiness. But holiness doesn't mean that you can't be happy. Matter of fact, when you live a God-centered life, you should be the happiest people on the planet. <laughs> like God invented joy. So here's some things I'm going to encourage you to do. If you are a yellow, if your job starts to not be fun, Start making it fun. Every once in a while, throw a grape. 
right? Just, just do something fun. Ask for a change uh, of portfolio. Do something that involves uh, learning something new or meeting some, some new people. If you're married to someone who's a yellow, how many people here are married to a yellow? All right, if you're married to a yellow, encouraging words for you. Just do something every once in a while that's fun. Just, just, just spontaneous. And maybe you're one of those organized people. Organized, just don't tell them. Right? And say, all of a sudden on, on Friday, you say, we're going to the comedy club. Yellows are going to go, woohoo! Right? Just, just plan some things that are fun. And then the, the last thing, that, kind of a, a warning here, is that yellows may choose pleasure or fun over wisdom. Right? That's not smart. Yeah, but it'd be fun. <laughs> right? And, and as kids, didn't you get in trouble for that one? There, there's always a, the temperament that goes, I don't think we should swing on that vine. And then there's yellows. Woohoo! What vine? Right? Right? We just, they just have that knee jerk reaction. And sometimes that, that drive for fun will override wisdom. It happened with Dave. <laughs> Dave. King Dave. We're, we're on first name basis. I just call him Dave. It happened with David. King David winds up in a situation where, where he sees another man's wife and he starts to lust after her and he even has someone that comes in and warns him. He says, you know what? She's a married woman. You're the king. You get to have, you get to have a relationship with anyone in the kingdom. You're the king, but don't, don't have a relationship with another man's wife. And David said, yeah, but it looks like it would be fun. And he has an affair. And Fun overrides wisdom. And then, then he's, he's spontaneous again. See, whenever she says, oh, uh, Dave, she would call him Dave. I call him David. It was just a mistake. But she'd call him Dave. Oh, Dave, uh, a little problem. What's that, baby? I'm pregnant. What do you think we ought to do? Here's, here's the knee-jerk reaction. Let's kill somebody. Aren't there a couple of steps in between, right? No, he's like, no, let's kill your husband. And, and she, doesn't, she doesn't even protest that much. Oh, okay. Uh, she must have been a yellow as well, right? That seems like the right thing to do, right? And all of a sudden, they make decisions that are not wise. And if we aren't careful, sometimes as yellows, the pursuit of fun will override wisdom, and it, could, it can cause tremendous pain. In fact, there are a lot of people who have broken hearts in the room today because of the spontaneity of a yellow. So here's, as we wrap things up, there's a good news. God is not attempting to limit your fun. God invented fun. Matter of fact, say that with me, if you would, please. God invented fun. Matter of fact, God wants you to have fun on a very high, high level. But here's what Satan has always done. And in particular, I think he's done this with yellows. He tries to make yellows think that serving God is not fun. I don't have enough evidence to prove this, but I think Eve, in the Garden of Eve, and I think Eden, I think Eve was a yellow. And the reason being is the temptation that she faced was this. See, God doesn't want you to have fun. Did God say that you can't eat of that tree? Because that's the fun tree. And she goes, well, you know, he said if, if we eat of that tree, it wouldn't be fun. That there'd be consequences. And the devil says, ah, don't worry about consequences. Let's have some fun. See, God's holding out on you. In the reality, we know the story. God wasn't holding out on Eve. God was protecting Eve. And the majority of the times in our lives that we start to feel like God is holding out on us, I assure you, I assure you that He is doing what He does to make sure that you have the best quality of life. But Satan sneaks in and says, but God's trying to keep you from having fun. So I, the gift that I believe God has all, for all the yellows today is an incredible gift. And it's, a, it's a, a word that we don't use all that much, I think, in our culture anymore, but I think it's a, such a powerful, romantic, beautiful word. Contentment. God wants you to be content. Happy and content. I'll read one last scripture. It's found in Philippians 4, verse 12. We're about halfway through the verse, and, and here's what the author says. I have learned the secret... 
So he knows the secret, and he starts to share it with us, if you read the rest of the scripture, of being content. Everyone say content. In any and every situation. That there's something that God has for, for all of us. It doesn't matter what your temperament color is. He wants you to be content in every circumstance. That's why James could say this, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. You can be content. You can have joy when you're facing difficult times. You can be content. God wants you to be content where you are, who you are, and what you're doing. Well, I don't like my job. Eh, learn to be content. I don't like my house. Be content. I don't like my marriage. Be content. Work on all those things. If you don't like your house, get another job and start making some money. Buy another one. Paint it a different color. If you don't like your job, do something to make it fun. If you can't find anything to make it fun, ask God to give you a new one. And be content. What a gift. And for all of those who maybe aren't yellows today, and we're going to pray in just a moment, and here's, here's my prayer for you. That you could... You have a little bit more fun. Anybody here... Anybody here like having fun? We'll just take a survey. Right. If you didn't raise your hand, we have professional counseling available for you. Right, so, so we need to have fun. Right, you need to learn to smile. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I had to have been written by yellow. What if, what if the strongest Christian on the planet wears a clown nose? Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Huh? So we're going to pray. I'm going to ask our elders and their wives, our pastors and their wives and our altar team to come and stand across the front, and as you do, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge this church to make a move to the altars today. It is impossible to be content until you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here that would verify that, that you were not content until you gave your life to Jesus Christ and now there's contentment? See, we're restless until we give our life to Jesus. I like the people that raise both hands. Man. There's something so peaceful, refreshing, so alive about surrendering our lives to Christ, and yet the temptation is this. If you give your life to Jesus, you can't have fun anymore. And I would say this, if you walk away from Jesus, you'll never have fun like you have when you are connected with Jesus Christ. And so we're going to pray. There are going to be some people here that, that need to be content. And it doesn't matter if you're yellow or not. All right? You can maybe one of all the four temperaments, but you just realize, I am not content. And if contentment is, is a secret that's been revealed, it starts at the altar and... I want God to make me content. In the circumstance that I am in, I want to settle down. I want to be content. Because when we are content, it creates the environment for God to do the miraculous. And then there's people that would say, well, I'm just, I'm just not having fun. And we're really honest. We're just, just not having fun. We just kind of do what we do. And, and as we're talking, it's like the Holy Spirit says, you need to learn to smile. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You need to learn to be attractive. And your smile is the most attractive feature you have for those people who are not a part of the church. Your opinions don't attract people to the church. Your finger pointing never once attracted someone to the church. Your joy, that attracts people to the church. So, if you can't be content without giving your life to Jesus Christ, and I believe that's a very true statement, I, I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity in just a moment.
to say a prayer. I invite Jesus to be a part of your life. I'm going to ask everyone here to stand. If you're physically able, would you stand with me? All right. No eyes closed. All right. This is just like this is just confession time. All right. If you need contentment, not maybe not even need, you just desire to have a greater level of contentment in your life, would you raise your hand with me all across this place? I want to be content in every circumstance. Even when I face trials of many kinds, I want to have contentment. You can put your hands down for just a moment. Are there people here today who say, well, I think I may not be as attractive to those outside the church as I need to be because I just don't reflect that level of joy, the level of fun, the level of humor. The, I don't reflect the joyous side of who God is in, in, the, in the measure that I would like it to. It doesn't mean that you're not fun. It doesn't mean you're miserable. You just realize that, that on, meter, on, on the fun meter, you're just not peeking out where you need to peek out. And if that's you, you just like God to, to put joy, more than fun, but God-given joy in your life. Would you raise your hand with me all across this place? I'd like God to give me a, an overdose of the Holy Ghost. I want, I want some joy in my life. All right. And the last thing we're going to pray for is this. Everyone else has confessed. If you are not in a living relationship with Jesus Christ, maybe you said a prayer at one point in life, but you realize you're just, you're just not where you need to be. Maybe you never said a prayer asking Jesus to be Lord of your life, and today you're thinking, well, to be content, you've got to have Jesus. I, I want to start that process today. So if you're saying, I, I just want a fresh relationship with Jesus Christ, would you raise your hand with me all across this place? Fresh relationship with Jesus Christ. Hands are going up. Good deal. Then we're going to pray. Everyone here, would you put your hand right on your heart? This is the most important prayer we're going to pray today. Would you say this right out loud? Heavenly Father, I need you to give me a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Forgive me, Lord, of everything I've said and everything I've done that has separated me from you. Cleanse my life, spirit, soul, and body. I thank you, Lord, that you have created me the color that I am. I want to live my life reflecting your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the first prayer. And if you said you want a living relationship with Jesus Christ, it just happened. The only requirement is this. You just got to ask, and you ask. So I think we ought to celebrate for just a moment. I saw some young people putting their hands together, man. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to wrap things up with the word of prayer, and you know that I have to go to another campus. I wish I could, you know, stand around and hug everyone. But we have people up in the front that would love to hug and love to pray with you about any need that you have. But if you said that you want contentment in your life, I would challenge you, don't leave the day without at least kneeling, saying a prayer with someone. If you said, I'd like to have fun increase in my life, let me encourage you. Come to the altars and tell Jesus about where you are. If you have a need in your life and, and it has nothing to do with anything I said, there are people here that would love to pray with you because when two or three agree together, God's Spirit is with us. And so I want to pray for you. As I'm saying a prayer, if you'd like someone to pray with you or if you'd like to kneel at these altars, would you come during my prayer? It will not upset me. In fact, it will make my day as you're making your way. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the work you're doing in and through the lives of this church family. I thank you, Lord, in particular for those that have made a, a fresh commitment to you. For those, Lord, that, that are saying today they just long for a higher level of contentment that, Lord, it's, it's in your presence that we find ourselves with the only kind of contentment that is lasting. Lord, for those that said they're, they're looking to enjoy life a little bit more, may we start to see life in others through the lens of your eyes. And I pray, Lord, that long after this sermon is, 
is spoken, that it would, it would be that your Holy Spirit would continue His work. And we ask this all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.